Hi everyone! I finally made a tutorial video of how I cut the box joint. As you know, I'm not a pro and my way isn't how a pro does it. So, please take it just like an advice from your friend. Basically, I will show you a less risky way with what a beginner can do so you can have a better result at the beginner skill level. Ah, don't worry, I'll go with these cheap tools with basic marking tools, so you don't need any fancy things. Let's see how I cut the joint. Okay, so I'll use this board. It's only dimension 2 faces, and the other faces are just roughly surfaced. And I'll cut the joint on where I'm cutting now without correcting the squareness. Please note the one dimensioned face will be coming inside of the box and the edge will be the bottom of the box. And now the marking. I usually see people use a marking gauge to transfer the thickness of the board from the edge, but I think a beginner should avoid it. It's because trusting the end grain squareness in two dimensions is risky. So I'm marking the shoulder line by using a square on the inside of the box and be sure to have at least 130 seconds of an inch leeway. Then I mark the bottom of both pieces and the top of one piece by using the inside face as a reference. For the rest, I use a pencil because I don't like to leave knife lines on the finished product. I could mark the bottom of the one piece by a pencil, but it may sacrifice the accuracy of the cutting line on the other face, so I use the knife. Now I mark the finger lines. Here, please be sure the marking gauge is well registered against the bottom edge to score a line. In this way, the board imperfection won't affect the joint quality. And then I scored it lightly. Oh, and when you score the outside of the board, please do not go over the pencil line. A tiny bit over one may cause a tear out when cutting the joint. For the second finger, people rotate the board upside down to score the line from the other edge, but I don't recommend it for a beginner unless you are sure that both edges are really parallel and the two balls have the perfectly same width. So I just mark the rest of the lines from the same reference bottom edge. Some people may point out the cutting side of the marking gauge because the blade of the marking gauge has a bevel, but you can ignore it. As long as you score the line gently, it won't affect much in the final result. After marking where to cut off, I finally use a marking knife to score only on the fingers where I cut off. If you are okay with the knife lines on the final product, you actually don't need a pencil to begin with. I kinda take time on marking process because I believe the marking is the most important process when it comes to a joint. Unless it's accurate, no matter how well you cut to the lines, the joint won't fit tight. Moving on to the cutting process, the most important thing here is, do not cut beyond the marking lines, but do not cut too far from the lines. It will make your chisel work more difficult. If you think you are not good at cutting a straight line, you can use the two flip method that I named just now. I'm sure you know there is always your favorite side of cutting, like cutting to the right side of the marking line or the left side. First, you need to put the board by facing down the inside of the box and cut only your favorite side. In my case, I'm good at cutting the right side of the line. You just need to cut it only about 1 16th of an inch deep. Then cut the end grain too. Once you finish it, you'll cut another finger in the same way. Then you flip the board and now try the unfavorite side. But the thing is, you cut the end grain of the line, so you can start cutting the board easily without your saw drifting. You just have to cut 1 16th of an inch deep, so you can make it.
Now back to your favorite side and repeat it. Okay, let's flip the boat and do the unfavorite side on the other face. What you just did is, you made the cuff lines next to the marking lines, and the cuff lines will guide your saw to easily make the final cut. Just let the saw do the job, and don't force the saw while being careful not to go over the shoulder line. If the finger is too wide, you can make a few relief cuts, but for this size, I don't cut it. For the other board, I do the same thing. This cuff cut technique is actually very useful to make a tenon too. Okay, it's time to cut the shoulders off, but I forgot to record this process, so I'm cutting the second box joint. Dozuki saw is supposed to be the specialized saw to cut this part on the finished line, but I purposely left a pretty good amount because you may feel it's difficult, and I also feel so. Now, let's make them fit. First, I'll have to get rid of this waste. It's actually easy, so don't be afraid. What I do is, placing a chisel about 1 16th of an inch away from the shoulder line and tap it by a mallet. Then I scoop the waist by angle cut. You repeat it until you reach halfway. Oh, and you should start it from the inside of the boat just in case. Then, you flip the board and do the same thing. One thing you should be careful about here is, when you flip the board, please be sure the cut-off waste isn't under the board especially when you are handling a softer wood. This is to avoid the board surface from getting dent. Finally, I'll clean the leftover. The most important thing here is, you should cut it perpendicular to the board, but you can also angle your chisel a little bit to undercut the middle part of the joint like the picture. If there is a too much left over, you can always slice it to reduce the waste material before the final cut. Now, this is my final cut, and I only cut the halfway of the board depth. I will do the same thing on the flip side to finish. After doing the same thing for the other piece, let's clean the shoulders. It's easy, first you tap your chisel on the marking lines from both sides. And then cut it off from the edge. The shallow cuts you made will surprisingly guide your chisel straight down. Once you finish this process, from here is where you have to be really careful. I always start working with the one board that has more cutoffs. This side of the board, I cut it as careful as possible to the marking lines, and I will tell you the reason later. Anyways, I should mention it's always safe to do a powering with the grain, and unless the board has the center of the grain, the facing fingers have opposite grain directions. Now, this is an easy powering part, as I can shave it from the outside. And here is how I do the opposite side. I do skew cuts from both sides of the board just like how I do. I used to chop it straight down from both sides, but regardless of the end grain direction, 
it sometimes breaks. So I ended up doing these skew cuts. Ideally, the end result look like this V shape. And now just clean it. Well, I cut this board a really tiny bit outside of the marking lines, so the joint won't fit. So, what I'm gonna do here is kigoroshi on fingers of this bigger board, which is to compress the wood fibers by clamping. Usually, I don't do kigoroshi if the grain direction of where it's going into is parallel to the compression in order to avoid the board to split. But if you have seen Japanese traditional masu box, which they use to drink sake, they do kigoroshi for the box joints. The thing is, if it's only a slice bigger than the mortise, it won't split the board and it will feel the imperfection once it swells by the glue moisture. Finally, it's time to glue up. I suck at the glue up and that was kind of out of my mind, so I forgot to hit the recording button again. So this is the second joint, just for this video reason. I don't have any tips, but just be sure to make it 90 degrees. And then I cut excess by flash trim saw and do the hand plane. You should always do it to the inside so the end grain won't break. If the end grain is too hard, you can put a little bit of water on it to soften. And then after putting oil, here's my box joint. It's not the best that people on YouTube make, but I don't need any sawdust and glue at all. Let me give you the final advices to close this video. First, if you cut it for practice, lighter color wood can highlight the gap or even glue lines, so you can know where you should improve. In other words, using darker color wood or contrasting wood can make the imperfection less visible. Second, Using a thinner board or narrower board is easier for the beginner. And lastly, you should try less number of fingers to get used to the finger joint, because it's easier to handle and you can have an idea of how much you can do kigoroshi for safe too. And I guess that's it for today. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. If you think this video is somewhat helpful or you want more tip videos like this, please leave me a comment or hit the like button. I hope you subscribe to my channel and you'll see me again in the next video. See you!